Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Welcome back to another video. This is actually the second part of a two-part series of planting some great things in galvanized containers. So in the first video, I planted up this great big galvanized bin that I got at an antique store with some really gorgeous plants. And the whole thought process behind what plants I chose were things that you could put in a container early in the spring and they will last you all the way until a frost in the fall which means that you don't have to switch them out for seasons, which is kind of nice to have some of your containers just like be for the rest of the season. You don't have to worry about them. Um, I did use a mix of annual and perennial, which means that some of them won't, the annuals won't winter over, but the perennials you could either leave in the container. Um, we have done a video on overwintering perennials and shrubs and things like that in containers. We'll link it down below, but you could also pop them out of the container and plant them in your landscape. And I'm going to kind of continue in that same vein with these two containers down here. I just wanted to show you a couple of different sizes just to give you some ideas. Oftentimes you can find galvanized containers for really inexpensive prices and they look really neat too. I've got some gorgeous plants here that I'm going to be using. Again, a mixture of annual and perennial. I actually have one shrub here that I might be using, uh, but I think they're going to be really pretty. And I chose colors that look really good midsummer, like really warm summer colors that will blend really well to like a fall kind of theme as well. So the first thing I did with my galvanized containers was pop some holes in them for drainage. And I just used my drill with a metal drill bit. And you can see right here, I've got four holes in this container. Uh, that way our plants will stay happy. And in this container, I've got four holes as well. The first thing I need to do is fill up my containers with some soil, which I need to go grab. Okay, so the first plant I'm gonna use is this gorgeous purple fountain grass. I love the plumes on this. I mean, look at the color so pretty they've got kind of like pinkish red um, and they look so great through the summer they grow great in the heat and then they look great in the fall as well um, so you can see that i'm designing these containers up against or i've got them positioned rather up against a fence and there's a tool shed on my left so i'm making sure that all of my tall center piece plants end up kind of toward the back of the containers and then i'm kind of building forward with my lower like spiller plants toward the front so uh, the grass is going to go in first and i'm kind of putting this to the back and left because I've got another plant that will get a little bit tall that I want to position in there. That looks really good already. And then my next plant is gonna go in right here. This is a golden butterfly marguerite daisy. These are such beautiful plants and they actually get quite large. So this one, the grass will kind of grow up and will fill in this area here. And I expect this plant to kind of like mound and fill in this spot right here. I just love the bright color. I think it looks really good, especially against like the dark colored grass I've got going in this container already. So there's that. And you see that I am leaving some space. Are you shocked? <laughs> we've got to leave a little bit of space because there is, uh, you know, maybe like four months we've got left of growing season. And there are some plants like in my other container that I know they're not going to need a ton of space to grow, but these grow fast and furious. So they're going to fill in this container pretty quick. All right, so another tallish plant is this Galaxy Glow Euphorbia. Look at the pretty structure of the leaves. I love the tinge of color that the new growth has. And this one with more sun, because it has been in a greenhouse, the more sun it gets, the more color colorful it gets, but I think it mirrors the color of this grass really, really well. This is actually a zone six plant. Um, so if you live in a zone six, this one might winter over for you. It won't for me, I live in a zone five. So this one I'm treating as an annual. Look at the root system on this beast. I don't often break up root systems unless they are really, really root bound like this. Look at that. We gotta break that root memory there. I learned that breaking the root memory is not as necessary as we think unless they're really, really root bound. So, here we go. Just tuck that one in right there. I'm gonna move the grass over just a little bit. I'm constantly shifting things. I don't know how you guys do it when you're planting up pots, but I'm like constantly moving stuff around. And sometimes I take a pot to uh, part all together and redo the whole thing because I don't really love how it came together. Just kind of happens. Okay, so in the center here, I want something to, that's gonna kind of like uh, work its way around plants and fill in. So that is where I'm gonna put this Diamond Frost Euphorbia. You guys have seen me use these before. Look at that. Isn't that so pretty? I just absolutely love it. And these, the diamond frost variety stays a little bit more um, like open and a little bit more feathery looking. There is like a diamond mountain and diamond delight, I believe, that are a little bit more um, thick. Uh, so this one will kind of work its way around plants. 
Okay, and then on this side, I think we're gonna go with a pomegranate punch super bells. So this one is kind of like a pinkish red, which makes it okay for me to use in my garden. Typically, I don't plant a whole lot of red unless the red has got a really cool undertone and I can pair it with pinks really well. And this one I think works great. All right, so the next plant is called a hippo red polka dot plant. And these are really great. This is actually the first uh, year I've actually planted them in the ground or in the landscape. They're different than the traditional polka dot plants that you might be familiar with that you see usually sold as house plants. These are really actually fairly versatile out in the garden. You can put them in the sun or shade and they do really well um, that I've seen in, you know, I've seen where they've tested them and how they have looked in both sun and shade. In the sun, they do color up a little bit better, it seems, um, but they're really versatile that way. And you can pop this out and use it as a house plant during the winter time. So that one is gonna bring some depth right over here. I think that's really pretty. I love using foliage, just foliage accents that have really pretty color. I think it's really nice. I think we're gonna tuck one more Super Bells in on this side to bring a little pop of color. And then I want a cool touch in here. So I've got a, a Silver Dust Dusty Miller. I love this plant, you guys. I love these in the ground. They look so pretty. Like they already look like they're kind of covered with frost, but they actually do look really pretty when it starts getting cold out. They just glow in the landscape. Okay, so for my very last plant, I am going to use a shrub. So this is a new one to me as well. It's an abelia, 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 I think it's abelia. Um, they're not hardy in my zone, so we don't grow them in our landscape. Uh, it's called peach perfection. Look at that, isn't that pretty? The new growth is orange. So as it starts putting on more new growth after it's planted, it'll look really pretty orange, folly kind of color. Um, so what did I say, zone six through nine? Did I tell you the zone already? So this one, if you live in a zone six through nine, you could pop it out and put it in your landscape somewhere. And they're just a really pretty plant. Uh, you know, I'm not really digging that structure right in the front. So I'm gonna think about this for a second. I think I might have some vinca um, or creeping Jenny that does a little bit more of a dramatic drape. I think it's a little bit too tall right here, which I could prune as well. Let me take a quick break and think about it for a second. Okay, so I don't know if this is gonna look any better, but I think I'm gonna put this one, like swap this one with the Super Bells here um, and see what I think, because I think it will um, kind of fit that space a little bit better back in here. I just love this plant, I want it to work. <laughs> so yeah, it does make a better side plant. I th Well, I don't know. I mean, it fits better right there, but it's just so bulky. So what I think I'm gonna do is m remove this and maybe add in one more Hippo Red um, and then possibly bring this diamond frost forward a little bit because I think that these two plants and the grass are gonna bulk up so much that they might kind of overshadow this plant. And I want this one to kind of fill in up here. Um, so let me try that. Let me get this abelia out of here. Oh, oh no. Well, I just might've fixed my bulk problem. <laughs> Dang it. This is going real well. I kind of in my mind had this laid out how I wanted it to look and it just totally isn't going that way. Okay, so let's try this. Let's try adding in some more color and moving this one forward a little bit so it can kind of fill in. Now I'm gonna try the same thing I had before. I'm gonna put that Super Bells in right underneath that Hippo Red and then I'm gonna try the Peach Perfection again right here in the front because I just, I want it to work so badly um, and I might do a little bit of pruning on it just to make it work. And I think I'm gonna have to do that anyway because this uh, silver dust, this will grow about 12 inches tall. So, I mean, it will grow and fill in and that's kind of the hard part too sometimes is anticipating how the plants are gonna grow. And it might look off in the beginning, like something might be way too tall or not tall enough. Um, but in the end, everything, you know, just give it a couple weeks even, a couple, three weeks with the heat and some fertilizer and everything will start growing and filling in how you kind of imagined it. Hopefully, that's the hope anyway. So let's give this a shot again. Okay. So let me prune on this just a tad and see what we think. So that looks a lot better. I'm gonna move this up even more because this grass, even though it looks like right here, there's a little bit of a gap if you've grown purple fountain grass before, you know that it just grows like crazy. 
So that will definitely fill in in that spot. And I think that that looks really pretty. So the peach perfection here, I don't know how fast they grow because like I said, we can't grow them in our area. So don't have an enormous amount of experience. I just was taken by their foliage. I just, I actually bought three of them. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with the other two. They're just so pretty. And I thought maybe if I could, uh, we've got a cold frame. So I thought maybe I could try to winter them over in there if I don't end up using them in containers this fall. Um, but you know, I might have to do some pruning on them just to keep it down if it grows really, really fast. And that's okay, I'm fine doing that because I'll have to come out and deadhead the marguerite daisy anyway, which it's not necessary. This plant right here, you don't have to deadhead it in order for it to keep blooming, but aesthetically, I like how it looks when it's deadheaded. It looks nice and clean. Uh, but I think the colors in this container are mirrored really well. Like they blend with this other one really beautifully. I think it's a really good pair. Don't you think it looks like summer fall? I think it's just so pretty. Okay, so now let's move on to the smaller one and hopefully that this process goes a lot easier. I've got some really gorgeous stuff, but I'm gonna move over a little bit so I can reach it. Or let me move it over toward me. That's even better. So this galvanized container I actually got at Walmart for $9. Uh, I think it was in their Better Homes garden collection, I think. But isn't that a really pretty container for $9? I mean, I think it's awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna use is my centerpiece. And again, I'm gonna put it toward the back making sure that the handles are in the right position. I plant so many containers and I get done and like the back of the container is in the front. You know, like terracotta, they have a stamp um, of like what size they are and whatever. And it oftentimes ends up in the front cause I'm just not paying attention. So gotta make my, sure my handles are in the right position here. And then I'm gonna grab this Carex. Look at this beautiful grass. Now I get mixed reactions when I show people this grass. Some people think it's, it looks dead. It's not, this is how it looks. Um, it's beautiful. I love uh, the fact that it can handle shade and some sun. This area right here, like most everything can handle full, full sun, um, except this one, uh, probably part sun, but it does get morning shade. Like right now it's morning time and it's shaded. And in fact, we actually have an umbrella up right now because the sun is just barely starting to peek over the trees and it was right in my face. So the um, plants are still shaded at this point of the day, but my face wasn't. So here in probably the next hour, it'll start coming into sun. But I like the size. This is pretty much like full grown size. Um, so it's a really easy grass to use in smaller containers because it's not gonna be too much. Uh, the next plant I want to use is a beautiful, beautiful um, hookera. This one's called Wild Rose right here. Ooh. Boy, I got that one pretty wet. I watered. Look at that beautiful foliage. Love to use foliage. And this one is a perennial. So that one can uh, either winter over, like I said, or be popped out and used in the landscape. Next up is a Super Tunia Honey. And I thought that this one would be really pretty tucked underneath the hookara just because the colors look really great together. They contrast really nicely. Let me tuck that one in here. The next plant is the Super Bells Over Easy. And I love the Super Bells because of the color of the eye. Um, so it's like an over easy egg, you guys. There's the yolk in the center and then the egg white. Um, but I think that the color mirrors like the Super Tunia Honey. You can kind of see that in the eye of that Super Bells. I think it looks really pretty together. So that's it on this arrangement, just four plants in a $9 container. And I think it looks really, really great. So let me clean up my mess here and get these positioned. And then we can see how all three of them look together. So there you have it, all three of them all together. I think they look absolutely beautiful, especially when they start to grow and fill it. I mean, they don't even really need to grow and fill in. <laughs> That's the beauty. They look so gorgeous together. And you guys, this one right here, I kind of like tucked a little bit more toward the center and that fixed my little gap problem right in front of the grass, even though the grass will grow and fill in. I always just fuss with my plants a little bit when I'm done. I'm um, just until I just like the arrangement really, really well. And I think that the abelia in the front there actually turned out really great. I think using a mix of both foliage and flowers is a really good idea, especially in a, a situation like this, because it gives so much interest, so much depth. I mean, you could sit here and study these planters for a while because of all the different plants in them. Um, so three different sizes, you've got large, medium, and small for three different um, budgets, three different sizes in your garden. Like you certainly don't have to do all three of these together. You could do just one and they're all gorgeous in and of themselves. So like keep your eye open when you go to thrift stores or antique stores, you can find all sorts of galvanized type containers that you can put holes in and you can plant them up and they're gorgeous. 
and they're not as expensive as traditional containers. So anyway, we will be giving you updates on these as the season progresses because right now we're just mid-summer, so we still have a few months to enjoy these and see how they grow and fill in together. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.